A lot of coronavirus legal news. The Justice Department is reviewing those stock trades made by some lawmakers after coronavirus uh, briefings. Uh, Diane Feinstein, uh, Burr, and I think uh, Kelly Loeffler also uh, being being investigated. Where are we with that? What do we know? Well, according to published reports, uh, the FBI has started to ask some questions about Senator Burr's trades which were made after a confidential briefing, although not a classified briefing, uh, to certain members of the Senate about the virus itself. Um, uh, And of course, there was Senator Feinstein's husband engaged in extensive trades. She personally did not, but that's, that's almost irrelevant in this story. My guess is nothing will happen from any of this. Uh, Even though Congress passed the law back in 2012, making it specifically illegal for members of the Senate and House to trade on confidential, material, non-public information, it doesn't appear that these briefings are going to meet that standard. Um, If these had been classified briefings, maybe that would have been the case. That aside, the politics of this are pretty ugly. Uh, it's pretty obvious that Burr did, in fact, trade on not, um, non-public information, and I think it was material. Uh, I think Burr, who is not running for re-election wisely in North Carolina, who has been a nemesis of the president and has allowed Mark Warner to run the Senate Intelligence Committee, uh, Burr just figured he's on his way out, so why not make a few bucks? Uh, pretty disgusting behavior, uh, but I don't think the Justice Department will ever pull the trigger, although if they were going to, they'd certainly pick a Republican first. You know, and and when you say all that, that sort of colors in the lines over what we've seen the last few years. You mentioned uh, with the Senate Intelligence Committee, you think, you know, Republicans are in charge there, but we just haven't seen a lot of traction from that Intel Committee to get at the root of the problems in (laughs) our government. And now you're looking at a guy who just betrayed his oath of office in order to enrich himself. Well, I think Burr is, a, is a, really a classic example of the never-Trumper with power in the Republican context. Uh, he's, he's practically a Democratic civil servant, uh, the way the resistance has functioned since Trump took the presidency. Uh, Burr has hated Trump from the beginning. He has obstructed getting to the truth about the Russian hoax, although there it was sitting in plain sight. You never heard him say anything supportive about the president during that entire three-year hoax. Um, Burr is not well-liked in the White House, as you might imagine. Uh, He he is well-liked by his uh, fellow senators, interestingly enough, but that's the nature of the club. Pretty pathetic guy. Uh, He will not be missed by those of us who care deeply about the country and his, his exit aria, which was singing this tune on stock trading, Uh, is pretty disgusting, and um, it's shameful, actually, but I don't think anything criminally legal will come from it. Yeah, sad. Joe, the Justice Department uh, is now saying that anyone caught intentionally spreading the coronavirus could face terrorism charges. Is this something that they can make stick? Uh, They probably could. I think there's enough public anger at Uh, anybody taking advantage of this situation. Uh, You've seen these cases where somebody spits on lettuce or on vegetables in a, in a, um, a a grocery store or a supermarket. And is you know, then all the produce has to be destroyed. And then the person is arrested. Uh, This could be considered a terrorist act under, under not only federal law, but under most states now have anti-terrorism statutes because it's designed to do harm in a political situation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if, 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 I doubt if there will be any of these cases brought because, again, um, talk about limited resources and what we have to do. But if anyone knowingly were to spread the virus, by, for example, somebody who worked in a hospital and took advantage of access to vials or anything like that, I have no doubt there would be a prosecution. Individuals doing something like this, you know, we'll see how – how gutsy prosecutors are. I would do it if I were a prosecutor, but, you know, I'm not there anymore. 
You know, Joe, when it comes to uh, the well-being of the American people, it seems like Speaker Pelosi has been focused on anything <laughs> but, because last week she tried <laughs> to pass a bunch of her political agenda items rather than Russia bill designed to bring relief. And then this past weekend, she was asked about the president of the United States and his response. And here's what she had to say on CNN. Take a listen. I don't know what the scientists are saying to him. I don't know what the scientists said to him. When did the president know about this? And what did he know? What did he know and when did he know it? That's for an after action review. But as the president fiddles, people are dying. And we have to, we just have to take every precaution. An after action review. Joe, what do you think of Speaker Pelosi suggesting yet another investigation into President Trump? Well, I think Nancy Pelosi is really a fascinating public figure now. Uh, when you watch her on television and listen to her, two things strike you. One, she looks like she's a zombie. Uh, she is facially Botox to the point and, and, and artificial surgery to the point of non-recognition. But she also has the Biden problem, and that is the inability to construct a sentence without gasping or breaking up or stuttering. And I don't mean stuttering in the classic sense, but the inability to get a word out. She is pretty sad, but she's also obnoxiously cagey and venal. And this whole thing about what did the president know and when did he know it, apparently he knew enough to block Chinese travel, mainland Chinese Communist Party travel, to the United States. And it was the single most important decision he made in the entire crisis. And it was made at the very beginning of the crisis when the United States gained knowledge of Wuhan and where all this stuff was coming from late in the game because of the duplicity of the Communist Chinese Party. But Pelosi, just remember this, she is the most vain, vanity is her moniker. She is vain. She is beyond belief in terms of the degree to which she is so proud of herself, no matter how useless she has been as a politician to the country over many years. She thinks that she's the most important person in the world. She acts like it. She carries herself like it. Her pomposity is, is really nauseating. Uh, she is the worst that America has ever had to, has had to offer. And may I say prayerfully, prayerfully as an Italian American, she embarrasses the hell out of me. Joe, very quickly in, in 30 seconds, you see states like Florida that are now uh, targeting license plates from Louisiana, New York, New Jersey, and, and <laughs> targeting these people, Rhode Island targeting New Yorkers as well. Yeah. Are they, can they yeah. legally do this? Yes. Uh, it's a factually based decision. In other words, the epicenter of the Wuhan virus, the Chinese Communist Party virus, is in New York, and uh, it's moving around. And in order to control the movement of the disease, you must control people. People move in cars. People moving from New York to other states are a potential problem. Uh, and there is absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, even though you have the right to travel, you do not have the right to spread disease. There is absolutely nothing wrong with states stopping cars with license plates from New York, taking the temperature of the people in the car. Remember, under pandemic, most states, including the federal government as well, have massive powers to close things, to shut things down when you have public yeah. health problems. So anyway, yep, they can do this. All right, because Cuomo says he's going to sue. Interesting. Interesting how they suddenly care about borders. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. We always appreciate your time. Have a great week. Stay safe. 